Just the all of us. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing okay. Happy Monday to you. Shout out to you all. I uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you are are happy, healthy, and as uh, as comfortable as one can be in these crazy times. Uh, I want to thank you for doing everything you're doing out there to slow and stop the spread of COVID-19. I want to thank you for doing everything out there that you're doing to promote and to fight for the rights of others, particularly people who may not have the same opportunities as you, people who may not look like you or believe the same things you do. And uh, I want to thank you all for, for continuing to support me as I, as I deal with a lot of the nonsense uh, that has and I'm sure will continue to come from the Warner Brothers side of things. Now, I just wanted to touch for a couple minutes because I told you guys last week and I was deadly serious. And uh, I hope people who are in charge of the uh, PR side of things and people who are in charge of HR and people who are in charge of the executive side of things over at Warner Brothers knows that I'm deadly serious when I say that I will be talking more uh, in depth about the investigation process as it has stood uh, thus far. So uh, today I'd just like to share a couple things with you all uh, insofar as the investigation before the actual third party investigation. And so uh, after my conversation with Walter Hermata, wherein he did throw Joss Whedon and John Berg under the bus, a conversation wherein he did claim that Joss Whedon was an asshole, that he never planned on hiring and that did not fit his vision for the future of DC films quote me on that if it's not true Walter go ahead and sue me on that now here's the deal during that conversation where I asked Walter would he be willing to support an investigation into my claims he said that it was above his pay grade and this is important because this is information that I relayed specifically to Warner Brothers HR in my two-hour conversation with them and my two-hour conversation with the, the VP of HR and also the VP of Labor Relations at Warner Brothers. This is a conversation that I had well in advance of any third-party investigation being uh, any third-party investigation being enacted uh, or engaged in any kind of way. So, uh, what ended up happening is, is Walter said that he this was above his pay grade and that he needed to take it to legal he did not specify warner media legal he specified legal which i'm assuming was warner brothers legal department now in the hit piece that they had put out on me they are playing fast and loose with the names warner brothers and warner media and this is a big problem for warner brothers because i know warner media is not going to like this so i uh, all along in this process, what's been happening is whenever they've attempted to do some pretty evasive and dodgy things, they would invoke the name of Warner Media to make it seem as if this were at a higher level and uh, by way of that, a more objective level than where it was actually, which was Warner Brothers. So uh, in my two hour conversation with the VP of Labor Relations and the VP of HR, a conversation wherein when I told them that Walter Hamada said that the situation was above his pay grade, they both laughed to one another. And when I asked them what was so funny, uh, they had essentially said, uh, you know, well, we know how much Walter gets paid. And, you know, they were, they were making a joke about how much he got paid in comparison to them, which I thought was odd, but I said, whatever, okay, we've been on the phone for a while. You may have to break it up for yourself, whatever. Uh, in that conversation as well, I did let labor relations and HR know that Walter Hamada, in my conversation with him, made a very tasteless joke, uh, a very tasteless but self-aware joke when he realized he put his foot in his mouth by attempting to defend Jeff Johns as vehemently as he did, wherein he said, I don't want you to put me on Twitter about this. Now, here we are. So, I... Uh, this is, these are the steps in how we sort of got into this place. And during the 
interview process with HR, they asked me for people that they should interview. I led them in the direction of people that they should interview, but in that moment I told them I did not want to name specific names because these people are ready, are ready to be engaged, but they do not desire to be the only people speaking out. And because a lot of these instances that I described to Warner Brothers HR and labor relations, uh, they were instances wherein multiple people were involved. And in certain cases, groups of people were involved. I said there was a, there was, there was a specific event that happened at this specific place. There were at least X amount of people that were there. You can easily track down these folks. So uh, as I was uh, as I was talking to them about this stuff, they were claiming that because this is an HR investigation and a labor relations issue, that they would be taking handwritten notes during that process and that they would sometimes need me to slow down or, you know, whatever it was so they could catch up. Now, when they said that at the beginning of the conversation, I thought, well, okay, they're probably really going to be taking some detailed notes and really taking this seriously. It was only about an hour into the conversation uh, wherein I hear one of the two individuals either from HR or labor relations. Now, mind you, we're all social distancing. Some people are working from home. Some people are working from other places. I hear the distinct sound of someone microwaving food during my two hour uh, interview. And I found it to be very odd and very concerning because I'm thinking, well, if you're microwaving food, you can't be taking notes about what I'm talking about. So that in other instances, wherein uh, I will talk about at a later date more specifically, that and other instances in how labor relations and HR has handled the situation led me to have my team ask HR for a third party independent investigation. Now, what I did not want to have happen is what is currently happening, wherein that third party independent investigator is actually someone working for Warner Brothers who's just going to do a softball investigation, say it was this guy and that guy, right guys? And then everybody goes, yeah, yeah, sure. And then that's the end of it. And we don't actually get any real accountability for folks who are still at the company that need to be held accountable. And for folks who maybe aren't working in the company in an official, in an official capacity, but maybe uh, uh, that the company may be paying checks to by way of the, the things that they create or produce, whatever it may be. So these are the things I've been trying to avoid uh, in, uh, the, in the process. And unfortunately, I've, I've tried through every through every means possible to express to people just how serious I am about the situation. Um, with respect to the third party investigator who has, uh, as I have it on great authority from some of the folks that eventually HR did get to, some of the folks that I recommended and that checked in with me and said, hey, I'm still waiting for HR to call me. Are they going to call me? And I go, yeah, let me get on top of them about this. I was having to stay on HR to do HR's job about the situation. And we're not talking about you know, random people. We're dealing with some higher level individuals who wanted to speak up about the situation. So, uh, what ultimately ended up happening was, uh, when we asked HR for the third party investigation, uh, they went away for about a week, uh, something like a week, I believe. And then we called them the next, uh, we called them the next, uh, we called them the next week. And I said, well, we need to stay on top of them because what I don't want HR to do is to say, oh, well, we completed the HR investigation. We didn't do anything, find anything, have them put out a press statement, and then we'd be playing defense the entire time trying to say, well, they didn't actually do the investigation. They interviewed some people, not others, and so on and so forth. So I thought we could get beyond that preemptively, uh, and that apparently was not the case. So when we have, converse when we have the conversation with Warner Brothers HR, and uh, they're letting, they're informing us, which is the same, I believe it was a, a day or so after uh, the massive layoff at Warner Brothers Pictures. Um, they inform us that the third party investigation was approved. And I asked them in that moment, I said, well, would you mind telling me who does HR report to in order to get something like this approved? And they told us at the time, well, it was approved by Warner Media. I thought, okay. Well, if it was approved by them, you know, we'll see if there's an investigator that is assigned to it that was from Warner Media. And when the investigator made initial contact with my team, they made it very clear in the email for which I have receipts that the investigator was engaged by Warner Brothers, not Warner Media. 
So while Warner Media may have approved and said, yeah, sure, Warner Brothers, you can do this thing, Warner Brothers themselves were the people that found the investigator. I expressed concern about that at the time uh, because I was made aware from an individual who has had a history with Warner Brothers and uh, who understood the third party investigation system that they had there and keyed me into the idea that I should be cautious with how the situation goes and make sure I dot all the I's and cross all the T's. Uh, they keyed me into that and I said, okay, uh, let me do my due diligence. Let me make sure that we get everything together. You remember on that video that I posted back on August 21st on Instagram, where I'm wearing a pink bandana and I'm letting people know that even though the investigation was approved, we have to do the due diligence. You already know. So uh, what ends up happening is we go back and forth with the investigator trying to ascertain exactly who engaged them. And we ask, we say, well, we were actually made aware. We actually believed it was Warner Media that approved it. Is that who engaged you? And the investigator gave us a back and forth answer because keep in mind, these third party investigators are lawyers and these lawyers are engaged by the specific entity that has put them on the case. So they have a fiduciary responsibility to that entity and not to anyone that they interview. They can tell you whatever they want to tell you if that ends up being the thing. Now, in order to avoid any liability for themselves and potentially for the company and flat out lying, especially via email, wherein they, wherein they were going to misrepresent who it was that engaged them, instead they said that they would check on it or something of that nature and that they would get back to us. Now, we were not gotten back to prior to my August 26th uh, investigation time slot. And I spoke with my team prior to that and they had informed me, they said, well, listen, we can go ask the questions in the interview and we'll take it from there. So when we get into the interview with the third party investigator, uh, after they give me the fiduciary responsibility uh, spiel, uh, what ends up happening is uh, they ask me if I have any questions after the first part of their introductory spiel. I said, well, I actually do have a couple questions. And now mind you, Warner Brothers HR had made us aware, both myself and one of my reps that was on the phone, made us aware that this specific investigator is someone who has worked, who they've worked with before and that they quote unquote, now I'll have to talk to my rep, but I'm fairly certain, let me quote unquote with an asterisk next to it, that they really liked this person, which sounded odd. And my representation of myself had a phone call after to say, well, is it odd that this person is bringing somebody on that they really like, especially if they're behaving in ways that uh, are problematic, or at least have been problematic for the investigation. This seems a little, seems a little odd. Anywho, so I, uh, what ends up happening is, after the beginning spiel from the investigator, I end up asking them a couple questions. I said I was made aware by Warner Brothers HR that you've done third-party investigations for them before, correct? And the investigator uh, is artfully artfully sort of trying to gauge how much they may or may not need to evade some of the questions that I'm about to ask. Uh, because keep in mind, this is a situation we're in. This person owes no responsibility to me legally. They owe no respons The only responsibility they owe is to the company. And oftentimes for these third party investigations, the reason why you hire an attorney to do these things, at least this is what I'm assuming, uh, is because any information that they collect is protected by attorney client privilege. So even if you wanted to get a record or subpoena what it is that they delivered to the corporation, as far as their investigation is concerned, you probably legally cannot do so because it is attorney client privilege information. So while I respect what that is, I've got to call it out and let you guys know the real deal and how it all has gone down. And because they've opened up the can of worms to say that I have not provided any actionable allegations or any of that, whatever they put in the, in the statement that, uh, that I believe the rap ended up taking and spinning as if I was uncooperative. Um, I told you I'm going to be giving it to you exactly how it's been going down. And until we get some sort of resolution about, uh, the ins and outs of the investigation, well, this is just going to have to be what it is. So, and they put me in a place where, obviously, the public is doubting. Well, I wouldn't say the public is doubting, but a lot of folks are doubting what it is that I'm saying, and they have not helped that with their statement. They have not helped it with the 
the, the blatant lies, which I'm assuming, uh, the, well, the misleading statements and some of the blatant lies that I'm assuming that they had to have gotten from Walter Hamada because they clearly had to have talked to Walter Hamada to get a statement. Because keep in mind, the conversation that I had with Walter Hamada was one we're in socially distancing, we're in the uh, we're, we're in that zone. So these are conversations that are being had from the comfort of our homes. So uh, insofar as that's concerned, they must have, prior to putting out that statement, talked to Walter Hamada and did not come and talk to me or my team at all. But they knew full well, if they, and this is what we're going to find out, is whether or not Warner Brothers HR had anything to do with that statement that was put out. Because if they did, they know for a fact that I spoke at length about the conversation that I have with Walter Hamada with them. And so that's a whole other situation that we're going to address. Um, so, like I said, we're going to combat all this stuff with logic. We're going to combat all this stuff with uh, common sense, a hard fact. Because that's really the only thing that I have to protect me. And so the, you know, the, the interesting part is that, you know, social media and PR and all of these things, you know, these are tools that can be used, you know, to, to better or to harm you. And I think a lot of what happens is, you know, I had to go on low power mode. Uh, I think what happens is when a lot of these companies, they desire to, you know, promote themselves, they'll use all as much positive PR as they can. And they'll use as much negative PR as they can to either dismiss people that they no longer have any use for or dismiss people that, you know, speak out against them in whatever way. So, mind you, if I had said what I said about some of the top level, or if I said some of the things that I knew about the top level executives at Warner Brothers in my very first statement uh, on July 1st, they would have probably attempted to use every bit of corporate might and PR to stomp that out. It was not until I mentioned or alluded to Walter Hamada uh, that they actually put out a statement. So if you need any more truth about the situation, just go and look at who's put out a statement and who has not. Warner Media put out a statement about the investigation and the, and the approval of such, but they have not put out a statement about anything else in any capacity, as far as I'm aware. So uh, we'll keep giving it to you. And obviously there's some folks who are, who are very passionate about speaking out, and I'm hoping that they do have the opportunity to do that. And I want to do everything that I can to make sure that that happens, uh, even if that means saying, hey, listen, I need to get assurances that you have interviewed all these people on this list that have come to me and some that have come to me since my speaking out who have been added to the list, you know, since all this stuff started. Uh, I need to make sure you interview all these people first. And once I get confirmation from them that they've been interviewed, then I will give you my interview and you can do whatever you want. So this is just the, this is the game. Um, and it's sad we have to play it. It's sad that I have to uh, risk the, the journey that I've made as far as this career is concerned, the journey that I've been working toward for the better part of my life, right? In all of my adult life. But this is too important for me to just let slide. And so it's a good thing and a bad thing that I don't have as much experience on the film side of things um, because I, you know, I haven't had to, I haven't had to sort of succumb to whatever it is that, that makes people just want to that, that makes people sort of stay in that zone or stay in the, in the, you know, uh, yeah, anywho, I, uh, that's the thing, at the end of the day, all I want is for people to be able to tell their stories, and what I'd love to have happen is for the individuals who were not there, uh, during the time of, uh, the merger, of AT&T's merger with Time Warner, I'd like those to be the individuals that receive this information, and I'd like them to find an investigator who's worked with them in some other capacity and not necessarily one that has uh, been put on uh, by any entity from Warner Media, I'm sorry, not Warner Media, but Warner Brothers, stark difference, Warner Brothers and Time Warner. So we're gonna make the ask, we'll keep coming out and you know speaking the truth about the situation. Like I said, if, uh, if I end up getting punished because of this, you know, so be it. But uh, I've got a feeling either way, history is going to vindicate the situation and, uh, I'll be, I'll be fine. So I uh, thank you all for bearing with me. And, uh, I want to thank more than, more than, you know, more than the, the, I appreciate you guys standing with me and all that, but I'm standing and I'm doing my best to continue to stand for the people who have these stories to tell, because I would not even be able to 
speak about the things I'm speaking about if it weren't for people who have witnessed this and people who are willing to speak out about the situation. I know I'm kind of the mouthpiece for this thing right now. And I know I've got backup, uh, some public backup from some of my co-stars right now. Shout out to Jason, shout out to Kiersey. And of course, there will be more. <laughs> but uh, th this situation does not just involve me. And I think what ha what's happening is folks are making it so much about me in order to minimize it. And that is not the case. We're talking about issues that are happening across the board with different departments, different individuals. This is much bigger than me. And when we finally get all the facts out there, uh, people will understand that it's not just me saying, hey, you know, I didn't like this person or that person for this reason or that reason. That's not, that is not the case. There, There is a serious problem that needs to be addressed. And, uh, you know, I want to thank the folks who are willing to stand up and to address it. Because like I said, I, and the reason I think I've been able to maintain so much calm and cool about the situation is because I know for a fact that once people are actually heard, that folks will be forced, they'll have no choice but to act. They'll have no choice. So shout out to the folks who, you know, who made me aware and the folks who are continuing to reach out and continuing to make me aware of all the other nuances that I wasn't even aware about, about the process. This is a, this is a, a process that has stuck with people for years now. Some folks have described it as the worst experience of their, lo of, of their careers. Uh, and we're talking careers that have spanned in decades. So I'm not playing around. I'm not joking around. And uh, so, yeah, anyway, I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Uh, and I will see some of you later on for some game streaming stuff uh, at 6 p.m. And for the rest of you, I'll keep you updated and keep you up on the happenings. I'm sure there's going to be some sort of puff piece, uh, not puff piece, but some sort of hit piece of response to this video. Or you never know. I mean, folks may call us up and say, hey, we want to. I want to talk and actually move on this now. Just please, just please shut up. <laughs> so either way, however we get there, I appreciate y'all bearing with me. And I know some folks don't uh, agree necessarily with the method, but trust me when I say this is the best shot to the best chance for success in actually getting something changed. So I appreciate the healthy skepticism. I appreciate the, I appreciate the haters in, in certain ways, you know, um, but uh, most of all, I appreciate y'all keeping the vibes positive and, you know, please don't go out there thrashing people. You know, we can make our voices heard and, and get stuff done uh, without completely, uh, you know, trying to, you know, just, just, yeah. Anywho, uh, <laughs> I'll talk to you all later. I hope you guys uh, stay happy and healthy and well, and I'll see some of you on Wednesday. I'll see some of you later on today, but, uh, until next time, my friends, peace, you know.